I'm still going, man. I'm still going. Yo, it's your boy, Don't Look Back, man. Back with another one. This time, we, we back on our hood shit. We go watch some hood shit. Shout out to my boy, Super Wario, bro. You know, he always deliver. Excuse me. What I need. And this video here, it's just, this one is the Young Thug, YSL. You know what I'm saying? That whole thing in, in Atlanta. I'm going to come clean. I knew they jacked like blood or whatever but I never looked at them like street dudes even though they would talk about how respected Young Thug was that 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 but it's like you just figure you know they're so successful in this they're not gonna be even be bothered with that like just the, the longevity of things you know what I'm saying like the music and the entertainment obviously would pay out more over time than street quick cash you know what I'm saying but hey I don't know nothing. I ain't pay attention to none of the case. I don't really watch none of that shit. Like, I don't be just watching the news. I don't keep up. You know what I'm saying? I got life to live. You know what I'm saying? It's okay, though. It's okay, though. Because my, my boy Super Warrior, bro, about to educate us. We about to get really educated in it. You know a lot. I know I'm talking. I'm just yammering right now because I don't really know what to say, but we're going to just drop the jaw. Let's get it. Drop that, drop that. So many people have been talking about the YSL indictment, and indeed, it is packed with a lot of violence. Indeed. We will be doing a full story soon. What we will say now is that many members who were indicted have been involved in other indictments prior to this one. It starts with petty things, like jumping people, and smash, and grabs, but eventually, things escalate. The younger days, sandbox crimes gaining rep, turns to grand theft auto, armed robbery, actual attempt murders, and lastly, murder. The crew came up on Cleveland Avenue, and were known as the Rock Gang, which stands for, Raised on Cleveland. They are affiliated with the Sex Money Murder Bloods. I'm not going to get too much into that right now. There are two sides, the streets and the sidewalks. For each generation, you will have a number of people who will go on to prosper in their respective sides. It seems like everyone meets at the top somewhere. An example would be a famous or rich person being robbed by a person or crews who participate in high-stake crimes, hence this story. So, Young Thug and Gunner was arrested along with the 28 members of the YSL gang. The Fulton County DA slapped Young Thug with a fresh indictment involving a machine gun that also names Yak Gotti. One other name came out in the YSL indictment, and that name was Trontavious, also known as Slug or Tick. Back in 2013, so he was involved in an people. armed robbery. So let's get I into it. Gotti, though. Javaris Crittenton was an honor student so at slight. Southwest Atlanta Christian. He was a baller, and he would win a state title there with Dwight Howard. After attending college in 2007, he was the 19th pick in the first round, drafted by the Lakers. It's alleged, during his time in L.A., he would align himself with the Mansfield Gangster Crips. They were founded in West Los Angeles in the West Pico Boulevard and South La Brie Avenue area. Their territory is bordered by Olympic Boulevard in the north to Venice Boulevard in the south between Hauser Boulevard. Being affiliated with the Crips makes you a target of the Bloods by default and any other opposing street gangs for that matter. In December 2008, he was traded to the Washington Wizards. There, him and Gilbert Arenas were involved in a locker room confrontation involving guns. He lost a lot of money in a card game against Gilbert Arenas. Some jokes became serious, where Crittenton threatened to shoot Gilbert in the knees, or something to that extent. Nigga, According yeah, to NBA, Gilbert, yeah. he placed four guns on a chair yeah, and it, left NBA a no-telling to pick one. I'm not saying you can't be a tough guy, you can't be busty as shit, but it's like, bro, for the wide. Bro, pay up the bread you lost. You're going to get your bread back, bro. Just keep performing in your desired career that you achieved over millions of people. Like, shit, have a little more fucking common sense, a little more self-respect. He was allowing Javari to choose the gun he wanted to use to shoot him. A month later, in 2010, Crittenton pleaded guilty and was given a year of probation on a misdemeanor gun possession charge. Two days later, Crittenton and Arenas were suspended for the rest of the season by NBA Commissioner David Stern. Of course. He was released by the Wizards following the suspension, while Arenas rejoined the team. As we stated, Crittenton was aligned with the Crips and eventually became a... My nigga. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I never even heard of you, bro. I know who Gilbert Arenas is. Agent Zero. Like, I know who he is. Like, you played during when I was a kid. And, in fact, you played with Gilbert Arenas, and I never heard of you. Shows, like, you took the wrong turn that day. You took, you made the wrong decision. You made the wrong decision, bro. Full-fledged member. In October, Abebe and two other members of the Mansfield Gangster Crips, Cecil Loran and Javier Romero Angulo, were attempting to shoot Kevin Green, a member of a rival gang, the Playboy Gangster Crips. In their efforts, they missed their target and ended the up Playboy getting Green's gangsters. wife. His wife was pregnant at the time of the shooting. Just three days later, Crittenton used his credit card to purchase a one-way ticket for Romero Angulo to fly from Los Angeles to Atlanta. By July of that year, and still on suspension from the NBA, Crittenton was questioned by Los Angeles homicide detectives. Specifically, they wanted to know about the ticket and his connection to two of the Crips who were charged with the murder. Crittenton acknowledged that he was friends with Romero Angulo and Abebe, and that he frequently had phone conversations and exchanged text messages with the two. He said he heard about the murder, which took place two months prior, from news reports. He only purchased the airline ticket for Romero Angulo because Abebe had told him Romero Angulo needed to hurry up and book a flight quickly and didn't have the credentials needed to do so. He said he knew nothing of the shooting. He also denied any affiliations to the gang. Despite all this though, he has tattoos on his body, signify membership to the Crips and also put money on the accounts of Romero and Abebe. He later admitted that he is in fact a Manfield Crip and member of the Eight Trays. Anyway, April 20th, 2011, would be the mark. Oh, 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 before they play his song, chill, 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 chill. Mark of his downfall. An hour before midnight, he and his cousin Doug left a barbershop on Cleveland Avenue in southwest Atlanta. South Atlanta, if you know, you know. But Crittenton had frequented the area. He's from around there. He has ties and he's familiar with the people. So we can assume it's nothing. We good. He didn't think nothing of it. At that point, after leaving the barbershop, fresh cut, Crittenton and Doug were held at gunpoint by four men. He was robbed of $55,825 worth of property, including a black diamond necklace that Crittenton valued at $25,000. Also, in a police report, was a black diamond watch worth $30,000. A witness was familiar with the guys who committed the robbery. Police would identify them as Trontavius Stevens, DeMario Stevens, DeMontanez Stevens, and Antonio Sumlin. According to the witness, Crittenton knew that Trontavius, a.k.a. Lil Tick, was one of the people that robbed him. Crittenton had looked Lil Tick in the face during the armed robbery and recognized him from the neighborhood. When it came to the initial robbery, Jones, the barber, told police that Crittenton did not have faith in law enforcement officials to make an arrest and, as a result, Crittenton, very upset, wanted to take matters into his own hands. Allegedly, Crittenton told law enforcement officials during the course of their investigation not to worry and that he would handle the matter. Although he was shown photographs of people who were potentially the perps, Bro, I'm not he declined to cooperate. To what's the, what's the he felt betrayed like because he grew up in the neighborhood man. and they treated him like a like, plague. Why is my son gonna he lock felt up? that he had given back to the community and was showed he wasn't self? being Hollywood. Yeah. But look what happened. In my opinion, Bro. he wasn't moving tact. I ain't gonna lie. We're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to jump to some else. Because he ain't, he ain't really hey, talking everyone, about the young Due to the threats of this page being taken down, Please go subscribe to our new channel and Instagram. All the links is in the description. So go do that, and I will meet you back here. So, I tried to find pictures of these guys, and for some strange reason I can't find any, except the ones that I have. I wonder. Anyway, let's get into this one. This story is about a kidnapping ring, most of whose targeted victims were highly successful narcotics dealers. The crew was divided by racial lines. The black crew from the South Bronx, led by Stephen Palmer, identified potential victim. Members of the other crew, the Whites, whose leaders were Ruggiero and Cleary, then impersonated law enforcement officers, purported to arrest the victims, abducted them, and held them for ransom. Torture was encouraged, if a victim refused. 
the police captain who headed the investigation said that although the gang did not deal drugs itself, it robbed drug dealers because that's where the money is. In addition to killing one of their kidnap victims, the gang also murdered two other people. One was an associate of a kidnap victim. In the other incident, the police said, the gang turned on one of its own and shot the person to death. The big break came on February 27, 1991, this when an intended shit. victim, Jorge, before. from Rigo Park, Queens, spotted two cars with darkened windows outside his home and called the police. In one car, officers said they found a handgun loaded with dumb dumb bullets, a walkie-talkie, duct tape and five sets of plastic handcuffs. In the other car, they found two police shields. Officials would not say whether the shields were authentic. Five men were arrested. So this enough of that, let's get into the meat of the story, pause. Stephen Palmer <laughs> conceived the kidnapping scheme in 1990. The group he led included Augustine, Van Dyke, James Brown, Keith Green, and Robert Cherry, all of whom were had been active in drug trafficking in Harlem and the Bronx. Augustine, who had worked for many of the most successful Harlem drug traffickers, was recruited as a member of this crew to select appropriate kidnapping victims. Palmer told his crew that he knew men who would pose as law enforcement officers to abduct the victims and extract the ransoms. For this aspect of the scheme, Palmer called upon Ruggiero and Cleary. The crew led by Ruggiero and Cleary included no, Anthony Castelli, Richard Olivieri, cops. and Michael Palazzolo. This is crazy. Palmer, Augustine, and other members of their crew met with Ruggiero and Cleary to discuss potential victims and likely ransoms. They compiled a list of 10 targets. Over the next several months, seven attempts were made, with varying degrees of success. In late 1990, Augustine no, informed Palmer crazy. that a drug dealer named Otmer Delaney was doing an active drug business at a garage in Harlem. Oh, man, Palmer relayed the information to Ruggiero. Ruggiero, with an associate named Tommy, followed Delaney to his home in Yonkers, New York. Ruggiero, stating that he was a police officer, approached Delaney and placed him under arrest. Ruggiero and Tommy put Delaney into the trunk yeah, of their car to and took him to a motel in New Jersey. We're looking, we looking for the one that's about to just have niggas captivated real quick. These ones, they fake a little dragon right now. This video is partially sponsored by Outs. Outs is a growing general store providing by law enforcement and ensure that the core members of the organization. Yeah, matter of fact, I'm going to pose it right here. If y'all want me to do some gang shit, man, send me shit, bro. Send me shit, bro. If y'all really fucking with these videos, because, bro, I don't be really willing to just sit through these shit sometimes, bro, because it's just like the same shit over and over again. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's your boy, No Look Mac, man. I'm